Good afternoon, everybody. I see uh, people popping in now. This is great. So let me just, uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Boom. And um, do a couple of things here. Arrange my screen. Okay. That's cool. Excellent. Okay. So a couple things before we get started here. Number one, hopefully you can see my screen now, and boom. Number two, this is my cover up here. So good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, so <clears throat> a couple things. Uh, today, I want to uh, talk to everybody about this continuing conversation on objections and when you get them as a real estate agent and broker, what to do. Uh, if you know what to do, you're, you're better, you're, you better your chances to increase the sale, either buy, sell, rent, that's your client. So representing that buyer, representing the seller in a lease listing agreement, or, you know, even putting somebody in a, um, putting somebody in a, uh, a rental unit. So that's what today is all about. I'm going to give you the scripts. I've been literally working on this for a long, long time. Uh, when you get an objection, by the way, this is going to take some practice on your end. Uh, uh, you know, but I guarantee if you practice these, you're going to get these down and you will be a better uh, salesperson for it. So let's get rolling so we don't uh, miss anything here. So let me first review a couple things from last uh, the last call we had last Wednesday which was uh, going through what an objection is, what a condition is, and what a, uh, a brush off is. <clears throat> so first off, uh, an objection, uh, understand that an objection is a situation where the prospect can buy, but has made the decision not to do so. While there uh, may seem like there's 10,000 objections out there, essentially there's only two, only two, that's it. Uh, the prospect, your prospect, uh, for one reason or another, does not fully believe in or is not uh, sold on the analysis of the problem, number one, and number two, uh, the solution to solve it. Remember that we did have some training on something called SPIN. This is how we organize all of our um, <clears throat> sales processes when we're dealing with a prospect, situation, problem, uh, implication, and what is the need of that prospect? And then what is the diagnosis and prescription? So uh, as I said, I've said a million times, you have to unearth the prospect's problems to expose what the want and need is. You then need to present a solution to solve those problems and satisfy the want and need. Remember spin. Now, Usually, the uh, problem needs to far outweigh what the cost of the solution is. Think of a prescription uh, out there. You know, if you are taking a prescription for anything, uh, think about what. Um, okay, let's continue here. So, um, uh, remember spin, that's the situation, problem, implication, and what is the need of that uh, prospect. Again, the prescription should, the problem should far outweigh the cost of whatever the prescription is. In your case, if you're listing a home, the prescription is, guess what? Your listing agreement and the commission that you're going to take to sell that house. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, when the prospect objects, they disagree with your assessment of the problem or your solution, including your commission, to solve it. Uh, either they do not believe that the problem, the need, is as bad or urgent as you say. By the way, it's your job to exploit that a little bit. Uh, or the solution will not solve the problem or it will cost more than the problem itself. I, I was saying... Um, I was saying how interesting that was uh, in light of today with the pandemic. You know, a lot of people are saying the solution is, is costing more than the problem itself. Uh, but uh, th nevertheless, that is an important thing to think about when you get to this point. 
uh, the problem and the solution, making sure the solution is going to outweigh uh, the problem. There's everybody popping on. Okay, so we figured it out. So again, just remember spin in your process here when you get the objection. Remember that the prescription that you're provi providing, in this case, it's your, say it's your listing agreement and it's your commission that you're charging that client should be the thing that solves that problem. And um, that's uh, really what we talk to at this point if you're joining late. So I know we got a couple of people that are going to uh, maybe pop off and on. So that's cool too. So here's how we solve this. Just a review here. This is the five-step method to handling objections as a real estate agent and or broker. Five uh, things here, okay? So step one, number one, hear them out completely and don't interrupt. When somebody's giving you their thoughts on what you just proposed, either buy, sell, rent, that is your client, hear them out completely, don't interrupt them. Uh, the second part of step one, is put in a softening statement before you answer. Most of these scripts that I'm about to give you are going to have a softening script uh, or softening statement as part of the script. So just keep that in mind. For instance, I completely understand how you feel. That's a softening to that. I understand why you would say that. That's a softening. You may not necessarily 100% agree. Sometimes you might agree with how they're feeling about it right now because they might not know the whole picture. In either case, what this is doing is when you are, are making them feel like you're agreeing to what they're saying, um, you're, you're building rapport even in the headwinds of an objection. It's really important that you do that. A lot of great salespeople do this naturally. Um, if you haven't done this before or not done a lot of sales practice, these are some of the things that you should practice with your spouse, significant other, practice in the mirror. I, I know this sounds crazy. I practice, well, it's going to sound crazy uh, for sure. I practice in the shower when I'm talking to people or if I have a meeting, I'm, I'm thinking about what I'm going to say. I'm thinking about what they're going to say. And then Anyway, uh, so you're probably thinking too much information, John. I get it. I get it. So uh, step two, question and isolate the objection. So the reason that we're doing this, questioning and isolating before you answer it, is because we want to make sure that, number one, this is the real objection. There's something called smoke screens in sales. Uh, there's uh, also something called brush-offs in sales. Uh, smoke screens are they're going to give you something that it's not the real objection. Uh, the objection could be money, uh, but they could have an objection as to, you know, your company. It has nothing to do with your company, big or small, experienced or not experienced. Uh, it, it probably has to do with the money. So that it would be an example of a smoke screen. A brush off would be when they don't necessarily have the time right now to be dealing with this or they're too, say, stressed out to be dealing uh, with this. That would be a, an example of a brush off. So step three, so that's step two, is uh, isolate and question and isolate the objection before answering. Step three is really what the meat of the webinar is today. And that is using these scripts that I've given you. And this is what I want to go through. Next week, we'll talk about confirming your answer and asking for the sale. But this week, we're going to be talking about these scripts right here. So buyer objections and responses for agents and brokers. These are buyer objections. Think about what a buyer is doing. They're looking for a house. So these are all of the objections that you could be getting from a buyer. By the way, you're going to have a copy of all this, so don't worry. Uh, don't try to write all these down. So um, let's go, Carlos, let me, uh, can I borrow you for a second? I'll unmute you. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Just give us a little, we got people from all over, Illinois, Florida, Indiana. What, what, uh, what's the weather like there? Because I can tell you here it's pretty dang nice. It's quite beautiful. A little muggy this weekend, or this week, I should say, a little hot, but it's beautiful. Gotcha. Uh, not a cloud in the sky, or very few, and uh, should be in the 60s. Not as good as probably South or Central Florida, but Florida, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so Carlos, I'm going to use you as my, uh, I was going to say assistant, that's probably wrong. Uh, 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 I was going to say guinea pig, that's probably not the best either. I'm going to use you as my partner in this. How about that? Sounds good. Uh, That's an equitable thing. Through these scripts, remember these four things. This might be your cheat sheet, by the way. Listen and soften, question and isolate, and then scripts, exactly where we're at right now. Step number four, confirm what you said. And then number five, ask for the deal. We'll deal with number four and number five next week. <clears throat> right now, I just want to focus on these scripts. You'll notice that most of these scripts that I've come up with have this softening blow. In this example, we're dealing with buyers. We're going to get to sellers here in a second. We're going to get to some other things here in a second as well. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, you'll be the prospect, Carlos, and I will be – actually, let's do this. Uh, here, let me do this a second. Let's let's change the view, zoom in a little bit so that's a little bit bigger. Maybe we'll even go one more. Is that better? Yeah. That's good. Yeah, hold on. Okay. All right, boom. And so let me get my blocker back up here so we're focused. Okay. So you're going to be the prospect. This is right here. If you can see my cursor, this is what we're looking at right now. So uh, you're going to be the prospect. So go ahead, Carlos, with with that saying right there, that first sentence. I appreciate it, John, but we're just looking right now. Oh, well, that's really good to hear. You know, you should look thoroughly before you buy anything. You know, out of curiosity, what type of home are you looking for? So I'm going to call a timeout right there. Notice what I did there. Uh, The softening blow is this right here. That's good to hear. Uh, And I'm kind of... I'm kind of reinforcing what they said. You should look thoroughly before you buy anything. And then I'm questioning, out of curiosity, what type of home are you looking for? The other object, uh, objective, not objection, the other objective here is to keep the sale going. Um, a, the sole reason for somebody as a prospect to say, we're just looking right now, is either to, they don't want to deal with it right now, or they don't want to use you necessarily yet because they don't know anything about you, or there's, there's a lot of reasons why they would say that. Your job right now is to not diagnose why they're saying it. Your job right now is to keep the sale going uh, so that you can get a, 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 an agreement to represent them as a buyer. So let's do another one. So read that one again, Carlos. Sure. Yeah, we're just looking right now. Oh, well, that's cool. That's great. Uh, are you looking to purchase a home? Like, so with that one, I, I shortened this a little bit. I'm going a little bit more direct. You can use these. Obviously, it's going to uh, depend on how well you know the client, the pro- uh, prospect. And um, it, it, go with the rhythm of what the chemistry is between you and the prospect. That's the best way that I can answer that. Here's a couple of more that sound like that. Absolutely. How many homes have you looked at so far? Or I understand. How did you find out about this particular home? Uh, And the last one, hey, good idea. What are you looking for? You know, just keeping it simple, brief, to the point. Uh, The other idea with this is obviously you don't want to sound scripted. You want to be casual in your delivery. And again, this all has to do with the chemistry that you have with the prospect. So if you don't have a lot of chemistry, you might have to be more formal in your approach, maybe using uh, this top one as opposed to the last four. So here's one that you get a lot of times with uh, people that are looking to buy a house and they think that their credit isn't good enough. Uh, So this might come up in a conversation at a party or uh, just general conversation at, you know, a kid's soccer practice or wherever you might say, oh, you're a real estate agent. Yeah. Um, Oh, we'd love to buy a home, but our credit isn't good enough yet. Boom. This is a great opportunity for everybody on this call. This is why most real estate agents and brokers are not, I mean, don't disrespect when I say this, they're just not as effective as they could be. When you're out at your kid's soccer practice or at the grocery store and you're making just general conversation like this and they say, oh, you're a real estate agent. Wow, that's really cool. Um, We love to buy a house, but our credit just isn't really that good. You hear that all the time. 
Um, so here's some really good responses that you could say to that to help you. Uh, so go ahead, uh, Carlos, you do that. I'll give you the responses here. Sure. Uh, yeah, you know, we've been, we actually were always wanting to buy a house, but our, our credit just isn't good enough. Oh, um, you know, completely understand that. I'll tell you, let me ask you a question. Have you spoken to a lender yet? Or let's go to this one. You know, that's very common. I've also had many of my clients find that, this is my favorite one, by the way, many of my clients find that their credit is better than they thought after speaking to a mortgage lender. Plus, a lender can help you start working to fix any credit issues sooner uh, that way. Uh, could I have a lender that I trust at least give you a call? So that is is probably one of my favorite ones because you're number one, you're keeping the sale going, but you all should be working with lenders. If you don't have them, I can help you with those. I have lenders in all of our states that we work in that will help people get improve their credit, will help people at least sometimes the prospect doesn't even know what their credit is. It's just an excuse for them not to have to go down uh, and get hurt by saying, oh, our credit is really bad. They just say that because they don't know. We've had cases where people have thought their credit was bad. We've run their credit through our lender. And guess what? Boom. Uh, they're able to get an FHA, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac loan, 3% down their homeowners. So do not let that stop you. This is a great segue. The next one. Okay. Did you know that there are many loan programs available that have very different credit requirements? Wouldn't it make sense to at least meet with a lender to find out exactly where uh, you stand? This could be something where you set up the meeting yourself, you could attend the meeting, or you could get them to that trusted uh, meeting. We don't have uh, Heather here on the call, but there has been at least in the last four months, at least uh, three of her clients and prospects that she was working with that are, that are, she's buying, she's going through the process of either closing on a house with them or looking for the house with them because our lender has worked with their credit over the last six months to a year and they're ready to go. These are things that you will want to have in your pipeline. Um, I always get the, uh, question on the leads when I'm talking to people, I don't have enough leads. I don't have enough leads. This is a this is one of the best lead sources that you could have is your community that you're with, people that you're talking to, general conversation of, hey, my credit's not that good. No problem, guys. I can help you with that. Or, hey, would it make sense to have me get you with one of my specialists, my loan specialists that work with people that have challenges with their credit? I love the second one again that you're saying that's very common. Again, building report. Hey, don't feel like you're a bad person because of that. It's very common. I've also had many of my clients, you're giving your experience here when you say that, many of my clients find out that their credit is better than they thought after speaking with one of our specialists or with, with a, a mortgage lender. So anyway, good stuff there, man. That's a, I'm telling you, this is a great way you can start getting in leads. These are if you work with these people today, you're planting the seeds for six months down the road. What's six months down the road? That's going to be in the fall, right? So, you know, uh, think about working with somebody today to only have them come to fruition in the fall, like uh, the example I gave you with uh, Heather. By the way, if you guys need anything with this, I can help you with this. I, my job here is to help you guys be successful in getting leads and making you and helping you be the best real estate agent broker that you can be. Okay, so let's go to this one. This is another one that I hear quite a bit. Um, uh, it's almost like there's a, a billion real estate agents and brokers out there. So here's how I would, would respond to that. So go ahead, Carlos. Sure. So it's, uh, yeah, listen, I, you know, I was looking at a home, but you know, right now I have a relative, I have a friend who's actually a realtor right now, so I'm good. Oh, okay. I see. That's cool. Uh, so does that mean you feel obligated to have your relative friend represent you or are you able to freely choose who you work with to find that next home? Now that particular response is a little edgy. It's a little bit edgy because 
you know, you're, you're kind of saying, well, hey, does that mean you're, you feel obligated to use your friend or relative? Or are you able to freely choose? Uh, when you say that, be careful because you're being a little bit edgy there. That would be, I would use that one. Uh, I love this shit, man. Or stuff, stuff. Did I say, did I cuss? I didn't mean that. I love this stuff because it's psychology at its best. That would be for somebody that is a little bit edgy to you. You know, they're a little bit cocky. They're a little bit edgy. And so I would come back to them and say, oh, I mean, does that mean you feel obligated to use your friend? Or, I mean, do you have a free, are you able to freely choose who you work with? Like, if I heard that, I'd be like, what do you mean? I, I can use whoever I want. Oh, well, it sounds like you couldn't really, you didn't have the freedom to do that. And, you know, just kind of play that game with it. Okay, the next one. Um, hey, if you didn't have a relative or friend in the business, uh, you'd be one of the few. A lot of people do. Did you know that 90% of the sales in our market are handled by just 10% of the agents? Just a quick question. Is your friend in that 10% you think? Now, this one, another edgy response. Uh, again, when somebody says, hey, I got a friend and relative in the business, it's kind of edgy, you know, in the first place. But, but when you use this, you're kind of putting pressure on them to say, hey, my friend or relative is definitely top of the game. Um, or you're getting them to think, no, they're really not. They haven't sold the property ever, and I'm just doing them a favor. So just be choosy when you use this. Uh, I love this. This is something that we can practice 65% uh, of our time, uh, and I know it's going to make us better. The last one, hey, I understand. So are you willing to risk the relationship if the job doesn't get done? Or are you looking for an objective professional that you could put to work for you? Again, another edgy one. The reason these are all edgy is because my relative and friend is a realtor. It's kind of edgy coming at you. So when you say something like this, um, it's to get them to think, hey, what if they don't sell your house? What if they don't find you a house um, that you want? They don't find you your dream house just because they're not that good at it. They really don't know how to use the MLS effectively. Are you willing to lose that relationship or risk that relationship? Just get them thinking a little bit. That's all. Number four, we're just starting to look. It's kind of like the, uh, you know, when you get into a store and, and uh, the sales at a furniture store. This is the, this is the one that I, I think is the furniture store response. If you ever gone into a furniture store, and I'm not picking on them or anybody that works there as a salesperson. Uh, but you'll get the, the salesperson come over, you go into uh, Ashley Furniture or, or uh, Lazy Boy or any of the comp any of the furniture stores, get the guy that, or woman that'll come over and you'll say, hey, we're just looking right now. It's, you know, kind of no big, we just started looking. We don't really know what we want. That's what this response is. So uh, in our partnership here, Carlos, I'll let you, you handle that one. All right. So yeah, listen, we're just, uh, we're just kind of looking right now. We just started. Oh, that's great. You know, one of the first steps uh, is to make sure that you have financing in order. Have you spoken with the lender yet? Nope. Again, this one is cool. This doesn't add a lot of stress. You're kind of assisting them uh, in, uh, uh, in this case where uh, financing is a big thing. And again, you're just wanting to keep the deal rolling. This is kind of mimics the ones that we talked about earlier where... You can tie them into one of your professionals, but yet keeping track with them and communicating to them along the way. Um, this might be a case where you get them to their lender. They get a pre-approval. They exactly know how much they can spend in the marketplace. That's going to help you, and they're going to be thankful for you. Now, obviously, you want to use a lender that kind of touts your, your skill set and, and your work that you do. Uh, so here's, an, here's another one. Uh, well, then I'm glad to have met you. You know, we've had a realtor. Um, geez, sorry, uh, guys. Have you had a realtor explain the entire home buying process and current market conditions to you? Now, the current market conditions today, by the way, in May 2020, is a little bit in flux. We know that. But that's why you need to be prepared. There's usually about 10 things to know in uh, the home buying process. As a matter of fact, Yesterday, if you guys are on the Anton Facebook page, um, I actually put a, the 10 
uh, uh, things that make up the home buyer process. 10 things. You can use this in this conversation, and that just kind of positions yourself as more of the expert. The next one here, hey, it's a great time to start. What are you looking for? Just keep it simple, right to the point, and notice how I'm uh, putting questions. Softening blow, questioning. I'm not argumentative. I might have a little edge to my answers, but I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with them at all uh, with any of this. Okay, Carlos, how about this one? This is one that you're going to hear a lot from people that already own a house, but either want to upsize or maybe even downsize. So go ahead, Carlos. Yeah, uh, definitely looking for a home, but we just, we just know that we have to sell our house first. Okay, before I answer this objection, it's really not an objection. I see it as an opportunity. Not only is it an opportunity for you, the agent, to find them a new house and represent that buyer with that uh, new house purchase, but you also have the great opportunity to sell the house that they're in now. This is two sales. So if you let this one go and you don't take advantage of this, you're missing out on some really, really um, uh, uh, interesting uh, ways that you can increase more leads. The leads are the best when they're homegrown, when they're organic. These are leads, guys, when you're talking to people. These are much better leads, like uh, light years better than what you would get on Realtor.com, Zillow, uh, all that stuff, all those paid leads. These are the best leads possible. And all you got to do is talk to people. You're going to pull out or extract these leads like you wouldn't believe. So Carlos just said that. They have to sell their house first. So this is a couple of the responses I'd come back with. Oh, so do you need to sell before you can buy? Like reinforce what they said and have them explain more. Bring out more of what they were talking about. The second one, would it help to know how much you can sell your current home for while you're looking for a new home? Um, and again, you don't want this to sound like a script. You want this to sound conversationally. All I'm doing here is keeping this going, but keeping in mind when that prospect says we have to sell our house first, I'm automatically thinking two sales here instead of one. Uh, the third one, I like this one a lot. Hey, that's very common. When would you like to move into your new home? Again, what we're doing here is future pacing them. So I'm not having them think about the situation now. I'm having them think about the future. That's one of the ways that salespeople uh, are able to uh, influence their prospect is by not, is taking their mind from the current present into the future. If they start thinking about the future, different chemistry starts to happen in their brain. They're excited to move into the bigger home. They're excited to move into the smaller home to downsize, to save money. Uh, they want to get this stress out of the way. So their thinking in the future helps them with that. These are all really good tools. The last one, have you met a lender I'm sorry, have you met with a lender to see if you qualify to buy a new home before you sell? Or do you need to sell the uh, current home first? Um, I've had clients in the past that have taken the current home and turned it into a VRBO or a rent, a long-term rental or something like that. These are all ways that you can not only keep the sell going, but you get the opportunity to service that client. Um, so anyway, I, I love this stuff. These are all things that you're going to get out in the field. Uh, Carlos, I'm going to use you as a thermometer here, a gauge, if you will, not a thermometer, just a gauge. Do you want to keep going with these buyer representation ones, or do you want to go to the seller representation ones? Or you uh, want to do a couple more? Uh, yeah, let's do a couple more. Okay. All right. So let's go with a couple more on the buyer side here. So, um, Go ahead with the prospect side, Carlos. Sure. So we're, we're, not, we're actually, uh, we aren't ready to work with an agent just yet. Okay, great, great. You're going to hear that objection all the time. This is where uh, a lot of things could be happening with the prospect. The house isn't ready to sell. There's an emotional attachment to the house. They don't want to get rid of it. Uh, there's maybe could be some financial challenges. You don't know. And that's not your job to really kind of understand in detail just yet what's going on. Uh, but this is uh, oh, the way that I would respond to that. Let me just lower that a little bit. This is a little bit longer. So 
we aren't ready to work with an agent yet. Wow, okay, that's cool. Do you have a home you need to sell first? So one of the reasons that they might not be willing to work with you to buy their next home is they've got to sell the home that they're in now. And they may not be working with an agent. Again, this is a way that you can turn one sale possibly into two. And this is a really good way to approach that. The second one, hey, totally understand. How are you planning to find that next home? Would it help if you could see all the homes for sale that fit your criteria at home on your computer first? That way you could just contact me when you uh, want to see the inside of one. This is kind of, um, this is kind of like the assumption cl uh, close. Um, you'll learn about closes here in a few weeks, but the assumption close is assuming you already got them as clients. And this is what that particularly does. I like that depending on your chemistry, rapport, and history with the prospect. Um, I see, have you spoken to a lender to determine a price range and monthly payments yet? Again, it's getting them to your specialist, your teammate, uh, your lender uh, to help them in that process. A lot of times they're not really ready to work with an agent because they don't understand all of the financials they need to have uh, for their next home. They're, they need to sell their old home. It's a lot to them. The way I would put, if that's the case and you find that out, the way I would position this is, guys, let me take that burden off you. You don't have to work. Look, I've done this a thousand times. Uh, it doesn't even raise my blood pressure to uh, handle a house for sale and help my clients with buying a new one. We have a great team in place ready to help you. Let us take that stress off you, off your shoulders with that. And so that's a way that you can say that as well, removing that stress and putting you in the position as the expert. Again, this is why it's so important to get your social media channels working, to get your videos going every day. If you, like, uh, if you, um, I had a sales contract here. I was working with an agent in uh, Illinois. I just sold a house. Uh, I was going to use that. But if you, if you put a property under, under contract, make a video about it. If you found a property, make a video about it. Um, we have a, an agent in Miami, Francisco, that just, uh, f he's got a client he's been working with. And Francisco found an off-market triplex. For him in Miami. They found it this last week. The client loves it. They're closing uh, May 19th, I think it is. Um, and this was off market. And the client is like, oh my gosh, I, I wouldn't have been able to find this without you. Right. He, he's positioning himself as the expert. But I said to Francisco, I go, can you imagine if you've got your YouTube channel, if you've got your Facebook, if you've got your um, uh, all the other social media channels laden with how you're the expert at all these little things, not everything, but a lot of things that would help your clients. If you send your clients to your personal website, by the way, I don't know if you guys are working with that and customizing that, but you should be like, send them there, send them to your channels. So they see, man, this guy's all over. He's, he's helping clients. He's helping people find off market properties. How great is that by the way, to find an off market property when we've got a pretty hot market, even though even though we've got a lot of challenges going on today with the economy, we've got a, still a pretty hot market in real estate. So anyway, I'm done preaching about that. Um, uh, how about this one? May I ask what expectations you have for the agent that you're ultimately going to be working with or that ultimately represents you? This is the last one. This is um, This is probably my favorite one. It's a little bit longer. And again, this is going to be working with somebody that's saying we aren't ready to work with an agent yet. So many of my clients have felt the same way at first. Now, notice what I said when I, the moment I said that. Many of my clients have felt the same way as you are feeling now at first. Until they discovered that searching for homes by driving around and looking at scattered listings online was not very efficient. So what you're doing is you're demonizing them going back home and looking on Zillow and Trulia and Realtor.com and all of that, you're demonizing that. And that's that's a great way to uh, frame it so that they come back to you. What if I set up your own customized online search so that you could see all the homes for sale by uh, all the realtors that fit your criteria? Now watch this though. When you say that, uh, you are telling them that you're 
going to give them all the homes that are for sale by all the realtors that fit your their criteria. You're not sending them to all of the other realtors. You're just sending them to the houses that were listed by those realtors. It's kind of a play on words when you say that. Um, you would also receive email, email notifications for homes uh, the instant they come up for sale so that you would be one of the first ones to see them before they sell. This is a great time to send them to your own personal website. You guys all have that to send them there. By the way, the reason I like sending them there is because they don't leave your domain. You have a slider that pops up that says, Hey, this is Carlos. Uh, I'm here. Give me a call. Do you want to set up a meeting? Do you want to go see this house? Uh, it gives them an opportunity to save the listings on your particular website uh, for you. It'll send a message right to you to say, hey, the, they have three properties saved. Immediately, that should trigger you to come back to them and say, hey, let's set up a showing or can I answer questions about that? Again, you just want to keep the process going. We'll do one more on the buy side, Carlos, but I've got, I don't know, there's a, guys, there's a, there's a ton. There's 15 of them that you're going to get. These are the top 15 on the buy side. Let's pivot. Uh, if you'd like, let's pivot over to the seller one just to see what, what those look like. Okay. All Pretty right. Cool. Okay. I got you. I got you. So these are seller objections. There's a lot more of these than there are on the buy side. Uh, you're only going to get about 12 to 15 on the buy side. There's a lot more that you could get on the selling side. So watch this. Check this out. The first one here, uh, you go ahead, take it away, Carlos. Sure. Listen, we're not ready yet to list, uh, but because we just need to find our first, our next home first. Perfect. Um, you, how many people have already heard that now when dealing with clients? So here's a couple of responses. Hey, let's figure out what you need. Do you need to sell your current house to purchase a new one? Uh, a quick response, right to the point. The second one is a little bit more in detail. So if I can help you find your dream home before you've sold your current house, that offer would be contingent on the sale of your current property. Most sellers don't want to deal with a contingency. And even if the sellers accept your contingency offer, you'll have time to pay. Uh, you'll have to pay more. Do you see why that's a weaker negotiating uh, position? Question mark. Uh, also, if you signed a contract to buy a home and then you put your home your house on the up for sale, uh, you're more likely to take less money for your current house because you'll want to uh, get it sold in a hurry. Uh, do you see how buying before selling could lead you to losing on both ends of the transaction? So this is in a case where you have a, a situation where um, you, you have you, you may want to have them sell that first house first or get it under contract to alleviate yourself of that contingency position. Some people may not care about that, but in, in talking to your, your prospect in this way, you give them all of the information and by delivering it in this manner, it really uh, looks like you are um, helping them out. Listen, I want to help you save money. I want to help you make more money. And this statement does that for them. Uh, do you see why that's a weaker negotiating position? Also, if you've signed a contract to buy a home and then you put your house up for sale, you're more likely to take less money for your current house because you'll want to get it sold in a hurry. Do you see why buying before selling could lead you to lose on both ends of the transaction? So that's a perfect thing to work with that prospect to list their house first get a solid offer on it and then look for, and you can casually look for the next house, but, but list that house. This is really going to help you list that house uh, in the headwinds of, you know, this uh, objection that they gave you. Okay. Next one, Carlos. Got something covering it up there. Hold up. All right. So we're interview other, uh, interviewing other salespeople. And we'd like to think over the decision of listing with you first. Okay, uh, this is a, from a prospect that is really kind of detailed and they are looking at doing more work in interviewing people. So this is a really uh, popular one that you could get. So you could handle this a few different ways. Here's how you could handle this. Uh, hey, I'll call you in a day or two to see if you have an additional questions. Is there something in my presentation you'd like me to cover in more detail right now? So 
Notice how when I'm asking these questions, I have uptone when I'm asking those. Another one would be this. Hey, I totally understand. It's a big decision. Uh, but I, I know you're looking to sell quickly. If you sign a listing agreement tonight, I'll have the time to do an open house this weekend. We can get this thing rolling right now. So that response is going to be used when there's a little bit of time pressure that's needed. Again, it all reverts back to this spin in truly understanding what their problem is. If their problem is they need to sell in a timely fashion or quicker, you may want to use that response. The next one is this. Hey, here's a thought. We can do the paperwork now. I'll post date it. If you don't want to work with me, I'll rip it up. And if you do, we'll be ready to go. That is a really good one. Now, you may have to explain yourself a little bit to that prospect and uh, post date it. Uh, and in, in today's world, you can have the whole thing filled out, signed electronically. It doesn't take a lot of time. But what I like about this one is it semi-commits that, that seller. And uh, so this one's going to take a little practice, but if you have uh, the time to do this practice, that's a really good one uh, to use. The last one, hey, I can appreciate that you want to compare real estate agents. Let's set a follow-up appointment so I can answer any concerns or questions you might have after you meet with the other agents. So another one that will allow you to do that. Let's go to a few more here. Um, now, as I, as I start to develop more of these, these now, you'll see this gray is kind of me guiding you with uh, some hints here as to how to approach this. And then you'll also see uh, this right here. Sorry, you'll see this right here in parentheses when you have this kind of this teal color. Uh, this is the prospect answering uh, those questions. So I'm going in a little bit more detail here with this. Uh, Tony, really cool stuff here. So go ahead, uh, Mr. Prospect, with this one. Got it. Uh, well, actually, another agent said that they could get us more money. How many times have you heard this one? Get you more money. List your house for more. Uh, so in this scenario, you need to have, uh, you need to run with the stats. It's not about what you say or what the other agent says. It's about the market. That's it. So you need to be, this is why you need to be an expert in your market. You need to know what's going on in your marketplace. So here's how I would respond. This is a little bit longer, but uh, be, be uh, ready. Check this out. Here's exactly what's happening in the market. We have X houses on the market right now, and you have X selling per month. That means we have X months of supply for buyers to choose from. You told me that you wanted to sell your house in X months, correct? Yes. Yeah. With X properties coming on the market every month, not to mention the number of foreclosures and short sales, wouldn't you agree that accurately pricing the property is important today? Yeah. Yes. Your home does have many upgrades, and many of the houses I've showed you have similar upgrades. That demonstrates what buyers are willing to pay. Do you have any reason to believe that buyers are offering more than the recently, uh, sorry, that buyers are offering more than the recent closed sales? No. Yeah. So the MLS data is all the same, but some agents will tell you what they think you want to hear so that you can get the list. So they can get the listing because they're, they're kind of desperate to land your business. I'm not desperate. Like if you want to use another agent because they're promising you a higher price, just give me the chance six months down the road when your house doesn't sell. If you could promise me that, I'm good with it. But uh, let me ask you this. What kind of agent are you willing or do you want to work with? One that's going to give you accurate numbers or just tell you what you want to hear? Yeah, the accurate numbers, man. Yeah, see, so look, there's a... And I'm saying this because I'm reading this right now, but um, this is how you'd want to reply to that. Because uh, agents all the time tout, hey, I'll get you more for your house. I'm going to list the listing, the, the listing choice, how much they're listing that property for is a big one. People would, will go with whoever is going to list their, pri their house at a higher price. That's ridiculous because the market dictates what that is. Okay, let's go to another one. All right. Uh, even though we like you, John, you're the first agent we've even talked to, so we should probably interview other ones first. 
hey, I totally understand your house is probably your most valuable asset and you want to make the best decision. Uh, I do have a favor to ask, though. I really believe I can be uh, do the best job for you, and I'd like the chance to see if there's anything else I can do uh, before you make your final decision. Would you be willing to meet with me again tomorrow after you've talked to the other agents? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So all we're doing there is this boomerang effect where we are uh, saying, hey, that's totally cool. Interview whoever you want. Just give me the last. Let's meet again. You know what I mean? I want to have that that choice to, to use these skill sets again. Here's another one. Hey, what would you like to see in the marketing plan or in the representation of your agent and their company that I didn't discuss with you? Sometimes they don't even know. And that might be an okay answer. I don't know. I think you did a great job, but it almost seems too good to be true. If you're on your game, you're not afraid of competition. Um, you know, if you're on your game, you know your market, you price the property right, your presentation's great. Uh, they're, by the way, what they're going to do is they're going to leave you. They're going to go and check social media. They're going to go and check any other resources for you. Make sure you're licensed. So that's why, again, start building these things, you know, be the market expert in your area. Cause they may not even talk to any other agents. They're just going to check you out. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. What would it, what would make it possible for you to make the decision tonight? That's a little more edgy. Um, you know, something to use uh, in the right situation. And then the last one, is there anything you believe another company or agent could do for you better than what I've offered to do? So again, a little bit uh, edgier. I like these two things, probably the most out of these. Um, let's do one more on the listing sell side. This is Zillow, by the way. This is a good one. Um, and then... Uh, I see I didn't highlight that. And then we'll do uh, some other ones. And again, we can we can practice this more. This is all going to be in the back um, uh, in the training platform. So you don't have to worry about that. So let's go to uh, this one here. Sounds good. Well, listen, John, I looked on, on Zillow and Zillow told us that our house is worth more than what you're actually stating right now. Yeah, uh, just a quick question, Carlos. Are you familiar with how Zestimates work? Not exactly. Yeah, it's interesting because Zestimates take the dead rec deed recordings in a geographic area to determine the number. That includes all refinances and deed transfers from family members, like quick claim deeds. And they don't include the condition of the home or really any upgrades. They can, the they can often be too high or even too low. I will supply you with accurate information from the MLS, which includes interior photos of the property that are most likely to be seen by buyers when they are also looking at your house. In addition, I can show you the recent sales in the area that appraisers will look at when they're determining the value of your home from the buyer's, uh, from the buyer's mortgage company. Uh, don't you want the best information available when you decide how to price your home and when to place it on the market? Now, yep. I'm ending with a question there, and there's always uptones in that question, but Zillow is one that you hear quite a bit. Zillow is not the MLS. Um, when they take deed transfers, they include quit claim deeds. So that's one of the reasons that Zillow is about, on average, at least 8% off in their estimates. This is why their information isn't as accurate as it should be. Your client needs to know that. Now, you don't want to put this in a position where you're bashing Zillow because that might be a nice starting point for them. But at the same time, you're not going to use Zillow to price uh, your house. And you need an eloquent way to state why that would be the wrong move. And I like the question at the end here where it says, you know, don't you want the best information available when you decide how to price your house and when to place it on the market? So uh, that's that. Let's go to, I'll show you a couple more in here. We only want to give you a 60-day listing. We decided to save the commission and sell it ourselves. Boom, that's a, that's a big one. Um, let's uh, list high. We can always come down later. You're going to get that from prospects. Hey, I have a friend in the business. Another way that you can answer those. Uh, this is on the, the listing side. You haven't sold any houses in our area. This is great for new agents uh, and a great way to uh, come back to that. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, 
What do you do to sell homes? This is a, a great answer for that. We will list your home. I'm sorry. We will list with you if you reduce your commission. Uh, we Let me go through that one because that's a really good one that I hear a lot, a reducing commissions. So this is how I would answer that. All right, let's be official here. Go ahead, Carlos. Say it that way. Um, so actually, John, we're thinking about it, but we'll go ahead and list with you if you reduce your commission for us. Hey, let me explain a little bit about how the commission works. Uh, it's interesting you say that, and I totally agree on why you may be thinking that at first. What I would like you to do is think about the total commission as a pie. That pie gets cut in half immediately. Half of the pie is offered to the buyer's agent office, while the other half stays with the listing agent office. Those, uh, then those halves get cut again and are shared between the office and the agent. The difference in my pocket between 1% and 2% is very little. So I would have no problem reducing the fee personally. However, the difference in your pocket can be huge because most of the agents are motivated by dollars. And with X houses on the market, again, this is where you need to know your market, buyers' agents are going to show their buyers the houses that offer the greatest commission. So if we offered a discount commission to other agents, what that means is for you is fewer showings and less qualified buyers. That result uh, that can result in a lower sales price and other issues during the transaction. Do you really think that's worth the perceived savings? Thanks. So that's a good one. I, there's another one coming up that I'm going to go over with that. Here's another one. We are not ready. Uh, we want to fix up the house first. If I list my house with you and buy my next home with you, will you cut your commission? Um, watch this. This is the one I was talking about. This is another way you could answer that. You know, I can appreciate that. And I want to be up front with you and say no right away. I will not cut my commissions. And for one simple reason. Now, this is where it gets cool. As a professional, my time has certain value. And I only work with people like you that realize the value of my service. And before you say anything, just think about this. If an agent is willing to cut his or her commission just like that, how well do you think they'll hold up when it comes to negotiating the best possible price for your home? I want to demonstrate up front how tough I'm going to be for you. Therefore, cutting my commission is really not an option. Does that make sense to you? Nice. So I'm telling you, this is the magic that you can get in the way that you answer these objections that uh, shows you're tough. Here's another one. I will keep my promise to the agent from which I originally bought the home. I have seen this market play, uh, marketing plan from many different agents. What makes yours different? Uh, what is the price? Why is the price so much lower than the other agents we've talked to? I mean, they have comps that show higher prices than yours. Uh, you know, on and on and on. I'll sell my house when the value goes up. How much advertising will you do? Because I want to do a lot of advertising. Uh, you're too busy. You have too many listings. This is for the busy agent. And we want somebody that can give us the attention we deserve. Uh, you know, on and on and on and on. Okay, so I won't go through all these. Let's go to the next section, though. And uh, you can see these are all pretty detailed. I'm still putting my finishing touches before I put them in the back uh, training uh, platform. But on and on and on. Let's go to the next section. You see these? A lot. These are a lot. Uh, I'm already at 58. I'm already at 60. Okay, how about a renter? How about a renter working with somebody that's uh, leasing? Uh, a lot of people do this when they first get into the business. Uh, this is a good way to make some ongoing income is to find rentals for people. And yet putting them in your funnel, hey, you're going to rent for a year. I'm going to get you with my team. They're going to work with your credit. You're going to buy a house in 12 months. But until then, I got to find you a rental. Boom. So prospect, uh, go ahead with this one. All right. Uh, I'm okay right now, John. I'm actually renting a really nice place that I really like. So this is a golden opportunity to show them a financial opportunity in owning. So this is how you'd answer that. Why pay someone else's mortgage when you can pay yours? Build equity and get more house for less monthly, less payment monthly. So that's a way that you can set them up to be a 
um, homeowner, homeowner. They just don't know if they're renting right now. They just don't know they could be a homeowner. Many people. That's why you have a lot of times these first time home buyer seminars really um, uh, bring in a lot of opportunity. And if you're working with a lender, they put these on for you. All you need to do is put, find a place to do it, get some people that are uh, first time home buyers uh, prospects, put them in a room and say you got 20 people in a room. If you pulled two people out of there that they were able to buy a house, wouldn't that be worth it? So it'd be worth it for both you and the mortgage person. So another lead source for you right now in doing this. How about this one? Uh, I'm a couple of years out from buying right now, man. Hey, everybody love. Oh, this is not my, this is my uh, telling you how to handle this. Everyone loves the window shop, but it's a good time to explore the right time to buy. So you might respond like this. Hey, just out of curiosity, what is the significance of that date? If they gave you a specific date, if we can get you approved for a loan, get you in a house today, not in a year and show you how to save thousands, would that not be of interest to you? Nice. You know, that type of thing. Again, uptone when I'm answering that question. So, um, okay, last one on the credit side. This is for a renter. Uh, my credit, go ahead. Sorry, I was stealing your thunder. <laughs> yeah, I'm renting because my, my credit is bad. So I'm just going to, I'm just kind of daydreaming right now about owning a home. This is a great opportunity to, again, to offer financial advice that could reshape their lives. Uh, hey, it's a great day to dream. And I encourage you to continue looking on our site. This is if you sent them your own personal site. Have you talked with a credit repair company or to a, a loan officer? Many times they can make a couple of tweaks that can bump your score dramatically. Can I share a name with you at blank blank credit repair? If you have that, a lot of mortgage companies, loan officers are doing this now as well. They have a uh, Credit, uh, quick credit, rapid credit rescore or rapid rescore that happens in 30 days, their credit can change dramatically. So, again, what I would do is really kind of build your team up with this um, thing. Let's go to the last one. The last section on here is just common objections that you'd get in general conversations and how to handle them for real estate agents. Um, with scripts. So these are just general. We'll wrap up the webinar today with these. We'll take a few of these. Um, we covered that one. My friend is an agent. I already have an agent. I'm just looking right now. These are just general. I've never registered on your website. Uh, have you been, con you know, hey, you've been contacting me way too much. There's one. So let's, let's use that one. You've been contacting me way too much. Given Giving a lead, the 10 days of pain can be brutal and annoying. Uh, again, acknowledge their issues and offer a reason plus solution. Again, I'll, you don't know what that 10 days of pain is yet, but you will. So, uh, but this would be, hey, first, let me apologize. I'm sorry about that. We are a very uh, fast paced market right now. Would you agree? You could say something like that. Would you agree? And I just want to make sure that you don't miss out on any, any deals. How often would you like to be updated, let me know. You know, and so they might say, "Hey, a couple times a month is great, but not three times a week." Uh, hey, no worries, no problem. I get it. And then you're going to just change how you're responding to them. How about this one? Hey, I'm busy right now. I'll call you back. Try to get a small commitment here. These small commitments are really, really important. Ask if they can answer a answer four questions real quick in less than two minutes. This will set you up with further conversations later where you can offer more detailed help. Carlos, we actually go through this in the setters uh, training. So it might say something like this. Hey, I understand that uh, if I can just ask you four quick questions, uh, I can have you off the phone in less than two minutes. Would that work? And typically, they're going to say, yeah, let's go. Or you know, they might still say, I just don't have the time. Thanks. And then you know you pushed it to the point. Um, I don't like using a realtor. You might hear that one. That's interesting. This is likely a, a history here. You can't answer this objection until you understand what the objection really is. Now watch this. Uh, so Carlos, tell me you don't like using a realtor. Carlos, you there? Can you hear me now? Yeah, there you go. There we go. Yeah. I, I just don't like using realtors. <clears throat> hey, can you share with me why you're uh, aren't interested in using the services of a real estate professional. Um, so what, what kind of experience have you had in the past? 
just the cost. Uh, it's more money out of my pocket. Oh, I can totally understand that. You know, expenses are a big thing for sure. I understand how you feel. This I'm going to go back to the script. I understand how you feel because if I were not in the business and wanted to sell my house, I probably would do the same thing you're doing. Again, building rapport. Same. I'm just like you. However, statistics show that 84% of sellers who start out marketing their house on their own end up using an agent when they realize the benefits of listing with an agent. Would today or tomorrow be the best time for me to stop by and review those benefits with you? So again, I'm leading them with today or tomorrow. That's called the option close. And so when I'm saying that, I'm, I'm not saying, hey, do you want to work with me or not? I'm not saying that. I'm not even giving them that chance. I'm just saying, hey, let me talk about these benefits to, uh, with you. Would today or tomorrow be better for you? And so I'm taking their mind somewhere else. I'm controlling the conversation. We do these uh, way back. We talked about the four questions of a sale, open-ended, closed-ended, uh, reflective questions, that you see throughout these scripts, by, by the way, reflective questions are one in which you know the answer is going to be yes. And then a buying question. All I'm doing is controlling what they're saying by the questions that I ask. Hey, would today or tomorrow be better for you uh, for me to come by and talk about these benefits? And it might be, they might say, well, neither. And so you're going to have to go back and that's, a, that's an objection. So you're going to have to go back and, and find out. Neither could be, hey, Saturday works better. Okay, great. So anyway, here's more. Um, you're asking questions I don't feel comfortable answering. I'm just gathering information for a friend. I don't want to give out my contact information. Why should we choose you? Uh, we want to think it over. We want to think it over. Hey, I would force them to make the general more specific in that case. We want to think it over is very general. So, hey, I can appreciate that. Making a logical decision is important. So tell me what is specifically that you're going to have to think over now that they, uh, now this is me, this should be in gray. Now they will give you the real hidden objection you can handle or use it in the patterns that you've already learned. So this needs to be in gray. You guys are seeing all the back office work I do now that needs to be in gray. Um, kind of thing. I'll fix that later. So anyway, these are the scripts, man. I'm telling you, this is one. Uh, there's another section here, listed homes that are already listed uh, homes with property objections and responses. Um, so we don't have to go through these. Just know that all of these are going to be uh, on the back site for training. Um, I will kind of stop sharing my screen now. And uh, questions. How about any questions with that? I got four in the chat here. I should have been looking at that. Um, oh, okay. You guys are just yapping back and forth. I got you. Okay. Yeah. So I don't need to see that. But yeah, any questions, Carlos, Greg? Uh, I know we had a couple people hop off. Um, anything from there? No. When, and when did you say those will be available? Um, I've got I've got to do some grammar repair, and I've got to uh, do that. They'll probably be. What's up, Greg? They'll probably be. Uh, in the AV blueprint uh, on Monday is cool. is my goal Monday. to have that. And so um, there's 85 or so uh, objections. There are uh, over 100 um, responses to that. And, and it's, it, again, the training with this is not just kind of looking at the objection and having um, – uh, a canned response. It's it's really understanding the chemistry you have with your prospect, the situation that's going on, and how to respond. It's more principle than it is script. If you know the principles, you can always say these scripts to where it sounds conversational rather than something that's scripted out. But this this stuff will make you a better agent, and this stuff will get you the leads that aren't all these crazy crappy leads you get from all these paid sources, uh, you can generate your leads organically. And if you take this training and, and just use this, um, it, man, it's going to make a, a completely different year for you. Mm -hmm. So it's super important to practice too. I'll tell you, because once you learn that spin to not sound scripted practice, just talking to people, just talking to people, just talking to people, super, super yeah. big. Yeah. Hey, great. Absolutely. 
Cool. Well, I know we had Jen hop off. She had a listening appointment. I think I nice. uh, hopped off. But uh, did, did, did you send her the scripts? So she can use them uh, for her appointment. Pretty well. She got two <laughs> listings this week for big houses, six fifty, seven hundred. So nice. I think she's doing. Uh, she's doing pretty good. Uh, but that's it. Let me wrap this up uh, as I close out all the webinars. Remember, wealth has nothing to do with money. Success has everything to do with failure. And life is as simple as you want to make it. That's it for the webinar this week. We will see you next week on the webinar. Until then, have a great week. We'll talk soon. Take care, John.